The very first moment of the movie takes us back to New Year's Eve, December 31st, 2014. A great gathering of people in South Korea are waiting for the new year with applause and cheering voices. Among these people, our main character stands there, Kim, an experienced detective with highly crucial missions assigned. Along with his teammates, eyes sharp, they move through the throng, ready to strike when the moment is right. The story then takes us back to 1982, where Baek Ji-hwan makes his way through the joyful crowd awaiting the coming new year. His partner Yoon Jung arrives shortly after. Baek wraps his scarf gently around her neck and takes her cold hands into his. Despite the two different time periods, we catch sight of the same scene. The crowd begins to count down the last 10 seconds of the year. Baek and Yoon Jung embrace each other tightly. Suddenly Baek pulls out a ring and proposes to a surprised yet very elated Yoon Jung. With surmounting happiness, she accepts a new year marked by pure bliss. At that moment, all the detectives are seen on alert after they identify the thief among the people. Back in the past, a thief, stealthy in movement with a knife, approaches Yoon Jung, rips her bag open, and snatches its contents. She soon discovers that her stuff has been stolen. She looks troubled. The detectives witness the thief trying to get away, while Kim chases after him. The scene plays much in the same manner as earlier when Baek Ji-hwan rushes to reclaim his girlfriend's stolen bag. In both scenes, thick action builds up as the chase ensues. Baek catches up with the thief and a violent fight erupts. However, he is overpowered by the thief, who stabs him, leaving him injured. The same thing happens with Kim. He holds down the thief but it goes wrong again. After Kim's colleagues finally reach the scene, the burglar wrestles a weapon off one of them and shoots Kim. Thus, both Beck and Kim end up paying a dreadful price for their confrontations with the burglars. The thief vanishes in the twilight, and Beck is left lying on the ground, fighting against the merciless moments of fate. The scene abruptly cuts to a clinical room in which ever-humming machines and doctors' whispers hurry back and forth. They slug it out, hands flying in a blur of motion bringing Beck to life and trying to carry away his tenuous heart rate. Kim is similarly lying underneath those unforgiving lights, locked in a dance of survival where his fate converges with that of Beck. Beck's mind is invaded by a surreal dream, a window into another existence. He steps into Kim's shoes and feels the pulse of his days. Meanwhile, in the high school corridors, Kim's dream inscribes itself with the vision of Beck and his girlfriend's laugh. Soon, they awake confused, reality bleeding into the reality of another. Kim recounts, in his dreams, about a man who lets us travel down the spiral of memories to 1982, when Beck is seen navigating through the corridors of his school. He holds a recorder in his hands, capturing a playful argument with Yoon Jung, with her voice in the background, a moment of pure joy and love. We find them exploring homes and dreaming of life full of possibilities. Yoon Young contemplates the sky, where she shares her thoughts on the temporariness of life. She places her head on Beck's shoulder and for a moment, considers the alteration of the cycle between life and finality. She promises that if only she could be born again, she would search for him again, prompting Beck to share her promise. The scene changes to the present. Kim wakes up from his dream. His mind is still living in another realm. He straightens up, exposed to the day, but under his breath, the echoes of his dream still whisper in his ears. The scene changes to a film-like whisper of the past. Baek Ji-hwan and Yoon Jung have a quiet dinner together. They amuse each other as Baek confesses his dream of being a detective, only to be playfully reminded by Yoon that such a career path may have kept them apart. Meanwhile, a group of students in the restaurant gamble and drink. Their laughter is a fragile veil over the fear of being caught. Fate has its way as Baek joins the scene and captures them smoking, including one of his own students. As they all run away in panic, Beck manages to catch his student. During his reprimand, the kid escapes, hopping on his motorcycle and speeding away. Back in the present, the detectives are having a parallel scene, chasing a thief on a motorcycle. He crashes and the police surround him. In desperation, he takes a woman as a hostage with his knife pressed to her throat, demanding that the officers fall back. The detectives are hesitant to risk the woman's life. Suddenly the captain arrives and advances quickly, landing a blow to the thief's hand causing him to fall to the ground. The captain approaches the thief and uncovers his shoulder, only to find nothing worthwhile. As Kim and his detective friend Lee walk down the corridors to their department, Kim is still curious about the captain's act. Lee recounts that the captain is well known, and there are many rumors circulating in the air. His wife was murdered by a criminal he had chased for years since becoming a police officer. Just when the captain was about to catch him, his wife was murdered by the hardcore criminal as an act of retaliation. 
He shot the murderer in his shoulder as he made his getaway, but it was never decisive whether the man had lived. The captain is convinced the only identifying mark on the murderer would be the bullet wound in his shoulder. In the flashback, we find Beck Ji Hwan scolding his student due to his wrong behavior regarding gambling and drinking. He urges him to sit on the floor, holding the chair above, leaving him to kick the pain in his hands. Despite all the begging by the student to set him free, Beck is unabashed and unmoved. He recounts a small story. The compass needle spins around until it finally finds its direction, reflecting it on his student, who is still searching for his own direction in life. Beck gently reveals that a teacher's role is not just to educate, but also to wait patiently until the right path is found. Beck Jihuan approaches the window, where he finds students and teachers marveling at the sight of the unexpected snowfall. The scene cuts back into the present, with Kim sitting beside a window, staring out at the falling snow while listening to the radio. The voiceover presenter breaks out an interesting fact. The snowfall in September previously fell only twice, the last being on September 26, 1983. As it happens, today is September 26 once more, 32 years later. He reveals a shocking forecast. A teacher, 32 years ago, predicted that it would snow for two consecutive days on September 26 and 27, 2015. As the radio host continues further, he reminisces about his teacher, who is none other than Beck Ji Hwan. Kim is startled and instantly recognizes it, a revelation that twists his mind. The story goes back to 1983, when Beck confides in his fiance that he has been dreaming about a man and seeing his life unfold every day. This experience eerily mirrors what Kim is going through in the present. When Yoon Jung wonders about the identity of the man, Beck reveals that he is a detective. Back in the present day, Kim shares his weird dreams with his friend Lee. He reveals that although the first dream was vague, the details have been pretty vivid. Now he can see the clothing and the surroundings. All of a sudden, Beck confesses that the man in his dreams is living in the year 2015, which elicits Yoon Jung's laughter, believing that it is absurd and dumbfounding. The students suddenly break into the room, curiously listening to their interesting conversation. With a knowing smile, Yoon Jung tells them about Beck's ability to see the future in his dreams, much to their astonishment. Yoon reveals that Beck even predicted today's snowfall. The students start asking Beck about their future. Feeling the opportunity to confirm his dreams, Beck shares a vision of the future. On September 26 and 27, 2015, a great snowstorm will cover the country for two days in a row. Back in the present, Detective Lee believes that Kim Gunwoo must be possessed by God. His voice is light and jokingly inflected. However, Kim barely hears him, for he is intense in concentration. Kim is seen reviewing the camera footage. His eyes furrow at one sequence. A woman appears on the screen, familiar in her features, as if she had been drawn from the depths of his dreams. Her presence haunts him, drawing him deeper into a mystery and blurring the line between reality and the subconscious. One night, not able to shake off his curiosity, Kim decides to follow the woman. The streets are silent and bathed in the soft light of street lamps. She hears Kim behind her, light footsteps, cautious, but soon the woman feels she is being followed. She quickens her pace as she leads him through a narrow, winding alley. Tension fills the air when, in an instant, the woman seems to disappear, leaving Kim standing alone. All of a sudden, she reappears behind him. Her eyes, flashes of anger and fear, accuse him of being a flasher. Kim is taken aback. He stammers to try and explain that he does not have any hurtful intentions, but the woman is already screaming for help. Her voice echoes through the empty street, drawing nearby men who rush to her aid. They overpower Kim, holding him, though he wildly reaches for his police ID to prove who he is. Chaos finally simmers down at a police station, where the woman and her would-be protectors realize that Kim is indeed a detective. Captain Kang arrives, puzzled, as Kim struggles to explain that he has been dreaming about the woman and that he isn't the threat she thinks he is. Later, the group gathered for dinner, which included Kim and Detective Lee, to smooth over the misunderstanding. The restaurant is tiny and filled with the hum of quiet conversation, but Kim is anything but relaxed. He is bombarded with questions running through his mind. He turns to So Yoon at dinner and wonders nervously whether she really doesn't teach at Seo Gyeong High School. His intonation gives away that he is still groggy from the confusion between dreams and reality. So Yoon introduces herself as a teacher from Seo Gyeong Jung High School, but Kim believes that she is familiar with the woman from his dream. So Yoon advises him not to dwell on it, but her words do very little to soothe his turmoil. 
Later, So Yun finds out from the headmaster that Seo Gyeong Jung High School used to be Maseong High School, but got its name changed in the 1980s under a new foundation. She requests this information be kept confidential. Disturbed, So Yun searches for the archives of the school and finds a picture of a woman who resembles her. Further, it convinces her that Kim's dream is no illusion. She invites Kim to look at the picture, which deepens her interest in finding out who that woman is. Kim is tasked with reviewing cold case reports and comes across the murder of Yoon Jung, who was brutally murdered and whose body had been discovered by her fiancé, Baek Ji Hwan. Kim researches the case and finds a suspect, a desperate laborer running away from loan sharks. Baek in 1983 is shown waking up in a jolt because of a vivid premonition of Yoon Jung's murder. Meanwhile, Yoon Jung finds an injured student in the school and comforts her before going to the hospital, oblivious to the shadowy observer observing her. The following day, with a look of concern and anxiety, Baek invites Yoon Jung over for an overnight stay at his place. She reveals that she has a wedding dress fitting, and as much as Baek would love to accompany her out of fear, she refuses due to superstitions. She wonders about his dreams, but Beck shrugs them off, holding her tightly as if against an undefined threat. In the present, Kim works his way through old newspapers. His eyes search through news from October 1983 until a football result, a 2-1 win, strikes him like an urgent alarm. On the other side, Beck is teaching in his classroom when he hears the jubilant shouting and applause from the room next door, celebrating the same score. It is then that it hits him like a ton of bricks. Today is the day when his fiancée perishes. A surge of panic races through his mind. Beck bolts out of the school and runs frantically through the city with one idea flooding his mind, to get to her in time. The streets are in disarray, and the police appear to have a tough time keeping the crowd under control. Beck, however, is desperate, so he pushes through the barriers and into the thong, his mind filled with the image of the murderer from his dream. Meanwhile, Yoon Jung stands in front of a mirror, fitting wedding dresses. The potential murderer is seen gambling recklessly with friends. He is losing money with every turn, his face twisted in frustration. As Beck storms into the gambling den, he locks his eyes on the murderer, who soon flees, mistaking Beck's arrival for that of a police officer. There is a frantic chase as Beck pushes through crowded streets. He never gives up. Against the confusion of the city, the murderer seems to vanish as Beck stands, fearing that the opportunity to save the one he loves could well be gone forever. The murderer, desperate and haunted, runs through the night until he bumps into Yoon Jung. She bends to pick up her things, which scatter all over the street. His eyes are glued to her bag, and a crooked thought worms its way into his brain. He gambled everything away, and now he has a fierce desperation for money. The bag, with its promise of valuables, becomes his target. Yoon Jung continues on her way. She goes into a public restroom to collect herself for a second. She dusts her clothes off, extending her hand to her bag for her butterfly clip. She smiles softly as she secures it on her dress. The restroom is deep in silence, but she does not realize danger lurks. Meanwhile, Baek Ji Hwan chases after the figure in black. He turns a corner and comes to a halt. There, within the man's grasp, is Yoon Jung's bag, bloodstained. Baek feels panic set in as the murderer sprints and disappears into the night. Beck splurges into the restroom, his heart pounds against his chest. He finds Yoon Jung sprawled on the cold tiles, her life ebbing from a fatal stab wound. A butterfly clip that once symbolized the innocence of a young girl now lay beside her. A tragedy that speaks of the final moments. Soon the police arrive, but it is all a haze to him. They take away the body of Yoon Jung, and Beck is left all alone to cry, his tears flowing like a torrent that never stops. Their future, which they had dreamed of together, now lay in fragments, destroyed by some act of senseless violence. Consumed by the pain of his loss, Baek Ji Hwan walks to the edge of the ocean and opens up a jar with his fiancé's ashes inside. He opens it, the wind blows them out, and they scatter. He watches them drift along and mingle with the waves below. Kim is seen asleep, haunted by vivid images of Yoon Jung's passing in his dreams. The scene changes to the one where he relays the devastating news to So Yoon. Yoon Jung's life is brutally brought to an end by a slash across her throat with a knife. So Yoon is left terrified. Baek Ji Hwan sits there in the ensuing silence. He gently lifts up her ring. It is now a piece of jewelry that is sweet and bitter. Steadfastly, the police pursue until they finally catch the suspect. Grieving and angered, Baek Ji Hwan attacks him. His voice is trembling as he asks him why he ended his fiancée. However, the police manage to control him. As the suspect is being dragged away, his son arrives. 
He is twisted with anger and sadness, and believes that his father has committed a horrific act. However, the suspect refuses to plead guilty. Later, we catch sight of Beck sitting at the crime scene alone, his thoughts flooded by a storm of grief. The son of the suspect slowly approaches closer and quietly apologizes for Yoon Jung's passing. The boy believes in his father's innocence and vows to prove it one day. In the following scene, So Yoon enters the classroom to find the headmaster scolding the students for smoking. During their conversation, a dark part of the school's history is revealed. In 1983, a fire inside the school gym ended 49 students, the school was rebuilt, and the accident was never reported, to save country reputation. As So Yoon and Kim pass by the gymnasium, they reminisce about October 18, 1983. Kim requests to see the 1984 yearbook. So Yoon looks for students from the class of 83 who should have graduated that year. Kim points out that the students in Yoon Jung's class realize their relation to the 1983 fire and the passing of Yoon Jung. With a resolve to get to the bottom of the story, Kim believes that Baek Ji Hwan might hold the key to solving the mystery. The police station. Kim goes over files, putting together a sharp and brutal composite. Yoon Jung was the first to fall, but not the only victim. Other women have met the same fate. A recurring element, a menacing black gas mask, appears at each scene of the crime. This is compounded by the fact that Kim learns that the man who everyone had believed was the murderer perished in a prison fight two and a half months prior to March 31, 1984, when the fifth victim passed away. This tends to point out that the real murderer could still be out there haunting the timeline that Kim thought he understood. In the prison visiting room, Baek Ji Hwan looks at Kang Hyung Chul, who claims innocence. He recounts how, on the night of the murder, Yoon Jung came out of the toilet bloodied, pleading for help before collapsing. Kang Hyung Chul remembers the smell of something around the scene and how there was someone wearing a black mask. Before departing, Beck further advises Kang to avoid fighting in prison. On October 18, 1983, Beck tries to prevent the fire from happening in the gym. The place instantly fills with smoke. Children have difficulty breathing as the doors are shut and locked from outside. Beck manages to break the lock and free the students. In the midst of this chaos, there appears a man in a black mask, so familiar, yet out of reach, flicking his mask away, running down. He leaves Beck with more questions. Kim now stands in that exact same school gym, preserved, just as it was. At this very moment, a supernatural connection is made between Kim and Beck, as Kim finds a clock where Beck had hidden Yoon Jung's ring. Holding the ring, Kim feels the precarious balance between past and present. Kim dials So Yoon's number. He informs her that Baek Ji Hwan has saved the gymnasium. He suddenly confesses how much he misses her. So Yoon caught off guard, hesitates initially before finally agreeing to meet him. She's coming back to Seoul soon, and filled with anticipation, Kim invites her to dinner. Kim leaves the police station with a spring in his step. But as So Yoon drives through the forest, a car looms in her rearview mirror. Its headlights blaze as it closes in on her. The car behind So Yoon cuts her off, making her heart miss a beat. Meanwhile, Kim is seen in the kitchen preparing dinner. The next morning, Kim wakes up on the sofa. The dinner is already cold and untouched. Suddenly, the radio crackles to life, announcing that a car had been found in the morning in the Namhan River with its railing shattered and its driver missing. The news hits him like a punch to the gut. The past may have been rewritten, but now the present unravels, and with it, the consequences begin to unfold. Kim learns that the driver is So Yoon. We see the car being pulled out from the water, and Kim struggles to approach it with heavy footsteps. In the police station, Captain Kang reveals the footage. The license plate of the suspect, caught on the dash camera, turns out to be that of a stolen vehicle. The camera in front of the car shows So Yoon as she approaches the driver. A thick smoke begins to emanate from the car and swallows her completely with its choking clouds. The black masked man appears with his knife against her throat. Watching all this, Kim's soul is inflamed with the dangerous mixture of anger and fear. The scene goes back in time to Baek Ji Hwan standing alone at the science laboratory window. The quiet solitude is broken by the entrance of a student, who brings him a tissue of Yoon Jung. It's the face of the same student, among the victims he had seen in his dreams. He realizes that he must protect her. Later on October 22, Beck hides in the science lab, ready to intercept the student and murderer. Shortly after, the student's coming is followed by the entrance of the mysterious man. Suddenly the room fills with thick, acrid smoke. In another timeline, Kim is sleeping in his car, dreaming about the scene. Smoke is smothering Beck, and he starts to pass out. His weak resistance is fading as the black-masked man gets another victim. However, 
Fate decides to give Beck and Kim a second chance. Beck runs out and catches the murderer off guard. Beck grabs a chair and smashes it into the window. He picks up one of the shards of glass and throws it at the murderer, cutting his hand. The murderer escapes the scene. Beck follows suit. They run through the school, but the murderer manages to disappear into the hallways. The murderer halts to pull out the glass shard from his hand, and his next victim is a witness to the crime, a passing-by girl. She screams out of fear, and Beck rushes to her rescue. The murderer soon blends into the crowd. The knife is hastily wrapped in a newspaper and buried in a time capsule to be opened on 22 October 2003. Beck examines the hands of the people surrounding him. Unfortunately, he doesn't find any trace of an injury. Things get worse for Beck back at school. When the director finds the black mask on his desk, he suspiciously accuses Beck of murdering the student. Enraged by the false accusation, Beck runs away with the handcuffs in his hand. Out of the chaos arrives the son of Kang Hyung Chul, who is Kang Sung Byung, with his motorcycle to help Beck escape. Kim, on the other hand, shows his captain a report, believing that So Yoon is a different case from the gas mask man before. There is a change of signature, leaving the unsolved mysteries hanging above Kim's head. Elsewhere, Beck and Kang Sung Byung find comfort beside the ocean after running away from the police. Conflicts of the past and present come crashing down as Beck reveals that he believes that the same murderer who tried to end the student is responsible for Yoon Jung's passing. Kang Sung Byum is seen in a daze as Beck passes him a small recorder with the detailed results of his investigation. Beck writes a note that includes the date, time, and So Yoon's name. He hands it to Kang and asks him to save So Yoon from demise. Kim and Detective Lee start checking footage from the night So Yoon went missing. They recognize an intersection where the car was last sighted. Its disappearance since that day naturally leaves them with two possibilities. Either the murderer met a grim fate, or he still walks these very streets, hidden in the shadows, urging Kim to drive through the forest. On the other side of the city, there stands a cabin, where So Yoon is sitting with her hands and legs tied. Suddenly, the door creaks open, and he, the masked man, comes in. He unties her hands before setting food in front of her. Suddenly fueled with desperation, So Yoon jumps at him, her hands reaching up for his mask. When the mask doesn't budge, she grabs the chair and throws it on him. The man crumbles onto the floor, and wasting no time, So Yoon takes his phone and flees into the forest. She immediately calls Kim, seeking help. Kim's heart races at So Yoon's panicked voice. She tries to describe the surroundings, a cabin, deep in the woods. Kim pounds repeatedly on the horn of his car, hoping perhaps by its peal she may be guided. But So Yoon hears nothing. She turns around, and dread fills her as she sees the masked man. Panic sets in and she drops the phone and runs away. The murderer picks up the phone, and by recognizing Kim's voice, he hangs up. So Yoon picks up a stone from the ground to fight, but to her surprise, the murderer stops, and he slowly pulls off his mask. The face that comes out is one she knows. Questions swamp her head, but she suddenly hears the sound of a car horn in the distance. She turns to bound toward the road. She bursts onto the road, and there is Kim's car. She waves her arms in desperate motions to alert him, but in vain. It is then that he sees her in his rearview mirror. He slams on the brakes, spinning the car around as fast as he is able to. But just as hope blossoms, another car hurtles down the road. In a fleeting moment, the car slams into So Yoon. Kim's world comes crashing down as he sees her drop to the floor, lifeless. He rushes to her side, holding her body in his arms. Elsewhere, Beck is saddened by the news. So Yoon's passing. In the following scene, we see Choi Hyun Ju walking alone in the pouring rain with her umbrella. The biology teacher pulls up beside her and offers her a ride. Therefore, she gets into the car. As they drive, Choi speaks about the criminal whose face she can't recall, but whose eyes, cold and empty, haunt her. Her gaze drops to the teacher's hand, and she sees a new gash, a gash that is identical to the one that the shard of glass had cut earlier. The realization comes, and she turns on him. The expression on his face changes. His smile goes, replaced by a cold stare at her terrified eyes. Elsewhere, Kim finds a crucial lead. The phone number he's been tracking down belongs to Kong Sung Beom, a name that sends a jolt of familiarity through him. He doesn't waste any time in getting to Kang's house, he breaks the window and gets in. He finds a room plastered with photos and newspaper clippings, all reports on the victims and the masked man. Before he leaves, Kim examines the phone he found and discovers an old message to Kang's wife, Choi Hyun-ju. In the shocking truth, he catches sight of a picture across the table, 
and comes to realize that the person he is looking for Kang, is his captain, once married to Choi. The scene then fades to a shot of Kim walking in the rain, dialing the number. On the other hand, Kang drives and looks composed as he answers the call. Kim reveals that the gas mask murderer is actually not the real criminal, but more of a copycat. Motivated by revenge, this man has been searching for the real murderer for years, ever since he was a student. The tension heightens as Kim steps into the road, spotlighted by the captain's car headlights. The captain's face hardens as he draws a recorder from inside his coat, a recorder that Beck Ji Hwan provided him before his passing. He recounts Beck's tales of dreaming and seeing the future. He reminisces about his first encounter with Kim, the strange familiarity of So Yoon's face, and the haunting memory that lingers in his mind from years ago when he discovered a knife in a time capsule. The murderer's blood was already smeared on the knife, evidence that could have exposed him, but his wife was kidnapped and he had to return the knife to save her life. However, the criminal cut her throat. While escaping, he succeeded in shooting the shoulder of the murderer, but he was unsure if he survived. In a terrifying confession, Captain Kang shows desperation and guilt. He had followed So Yoon from school on the grounds that if the man in the gas mask was alive, he would pursue her. The vicious scheme allowed Beck to dream of So Yoon's passing in his sleep, so as to provoke Beck and Kim to hunt the murderer furiously. While insisting that he didn't intentionally do it, Kang still maintains that he never harmed So Yoon. Kim gets an expose from Kang that he had changed history because of his wife's demise in the lab when she was still in her teenage years. At his wit's end, Kang begs Kim to convince Beck to slay him, pleading with him that if he perished, So Yoon would be safe. He also warns him from approaching the school. The pinnacle of desperation for Kang is reached when he suddenly shoots him as the police close in. Soon after, Beck wakes up from a nightmare to find Kang lying beside him. In a fit of rage, Beck smothers Kang with a pillow. The warnings fall on deaf ears as Beck marches boldly toward the school to confront the murderer. Lurking in the dark to meet him is the biology teacher, who is ready to take Beck out. Handcuffed and terrified, Choi Hyun Ju awaits her horrible ending. Thick smoke engulfs the space as Beck enters, but the teacher seems to be taken aback by the mask on his face. In a flash, Beck engages with his target in a torrid struggle to remove the mask off his face, ending up shocked by his identity. Beck lunges at the teacher and chokes him, asking him why he murdered his fiance. The teacher reveals that he had illegal experiments, and Yoon Jung discovers his malfeasance and tries to expose him, so he silences her. He staged the fire to cover his trail and end the students who knew about the incident. One of Beck's students interferes, hitting the teacher with a chair. The teacher survives the fall after being pushed out of the window by Beck. As the student releases Choi, their relief is temporary. The teacher returns and stabs Beck, then threatens Choi and her friend. In desperation, Beck tosses a bottle of chemicals at the teacher and bursts into a fire explosion. The teacher, now ablaze, moves up to the roof. But as Beck and the teacher confront each other on the rooftop, the teacher charges at Beck with a wooden stick. Beck remembers his dream of lightning striking at 11.36 p.m. This time, Beck ensnares the teacher with a metal rod. The lightning strikes, and the biology teacher gets electrocuted. He falls into exhaustion and a fatal injury. However, Choi and her colleague are late. Beck unfortunately passes away, leaving behind a legacy of bravery and sacrifice. The nightmares continue to plague Kim the next day at first light, yet he makes his resolute way to the police station. There, an unexpected change awaits him. His friend Detective Lee becomes the captain. In the following scene, Kim visits the high school where So Yoon used to work. As he steps through the doors, So Yoon approaches him, and in a moment of profound relief and joy, she grabs his hand. Her being alive and well lightens an emotional weight lifted off his shoulders. The sacrifices made by Beck, it seems, were not in vain since the changes in the past altered the present for good. The two walk together down the familiar corridors of the high school. Kim hugs her tightly, tears running down his face as he clasps her close. In the succeeding sequences, we catch sight of Captain Kang, now working as a teacher, reprimanding his student. Kim watches, reminiscing about an almost identical scene of Beck with his student from his previous dreams. On Kang's desk is a picture of his happy family, and we hear him calling his wife Choi. Their lives have changed indeed. The final scenes are of Kim and So Yoon standing in front of their future home with the same real estate agent as 32 years ago. It feels like the story is being repeated this time around, with a happy ending. Kim approaches So Yoon and proposes to her with the exact ring that Yoon Jung used to wear. It ends on a high note when the two share a long-awaited kiss to seal in happiness together.